Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Julian Hines. I'm the temporary chair of the committee. Um, and this is our second meeting. Um, this meeting is being held remotely um, pursuant to the pursuant to chapter 20, the acts of 2021, extended by chapter 2022 and 107, the acts of 2022, and extended again by chapter two of the acts of 2023, this meeting will be held via remote means. Um, members of the public who would like to access the meeting um, may do so via Zoom or by calling in via telephone. No in-person attendance of the public can be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. There's also a recording of the meeting that will be posted and we're recording. So with that having been said, um, I'll introduce mm -hmm. an interesting thing that has happened today, which is our council president, um, Lynn Graysmer, has volunteered um, in the absence of Athena O'Keefe, who's our um, clerk um, of the town council and who usually works with us, um, who is absent today. Um, so Lynn has volunteered to take her place and will be helping with the technological things in the meeting, but we'll strictly have a technological role. We won't be asking her questions or um, getting advice or her opinion. Really, we're trying to just basically have someone here for the technology. Do you want to say anything about that, Lynn? Nope. Just that, yes, I do. I, I am strictly here for the technology. I am not here to answer questions, provide directions, and I will actually be turning my camera off and muting. Okay. Excellent. Thank you so much um, for doing that, um, Lynn. And now uh, we will move on to our official call to order. So I'm going to call folks names and please respond that you're here and can be heard. Um, I'll start with how it's listed on my screen. Meg Gage. I'm here. Meg is you want to <laughs> <for> my name. <laughs> Andy. Yep. <laughs> Bernie. Present. Ken. Here. Raphael. Here. Erica. Here. Dan. Uh, you need to unmute, I think. Dan, hi. We can see you, but not hear you. Got it. Um, <clears throat> everybody's here, which is great. Um, as Meg pointed out to me before the recording, I'll just call out um, that we have two members of the public here, Andy Anderson and Darcy DeMont, um, who are joining us tonight uh, as of now. And... I'm just looking. Dan, can you hear us? Okay, just not audio. Um, okay, so uh, now I guess we'll move on to our public comment period. So um, if anybody would like to make a public comment, uh, please enter the room, state your name where you live, um, and we'll do three minutes. Uh, so you have three minutes to speak in your public comment if you'd like to make a comment. And just raise your hand on Zoom. Um, you have to do the raise hand function. I'm not seeing any public comments. Are you, Lynn? No. Okay, excellent. Um, so not seeing any public comments, we'll close the public comment period for the evening. You can always email us as well with your public comments if you're interested. Um, and we'll move on. There's, uh, Lynn, do you wanna share the agenda? Screen share. If not, I can as well. Excellent. Thank you very much. So we have call to order and announcements, public comment, which we've done, and then the in-depth review of open meeting law. So unfortunately, Athena's not here tonight, who is going to give us that review. 
and have us a time to ask questions. Um, so that will be postponed to the next meeting that Athena is able to be present at um, when she can attend. So we'll do that at the next meeting then. Um, so now we'll move on to number four, which is our first discussion item. Um, yep, yeah, Meg, go right ahead. Could we add somewhere, and maybe we do it when we approve the minutes of agreeing on who's taking the minutes so that somebody doesn't find out at number nine and forget, like I was happy yes, to I, early and be reminded that it's me. But if I yeah. <laughs> hadn't gotten on early, I wouldn't have known that until- Okay, no problem. I emailed, the, the, I emailed a list to um, Athena and I was, um, let me look here. I may okay. have emailed it. That would have been my fault. I may it doesn't have matter. It. Don't worry about that. Just that we put in our agenda reminder of who's okay. taking the minutes earlier in the meeting than number nine, because that would be a little bit late to find out it was you. Yeah, no, absolutely. I can <laughs> resolve that um, later tonight. I'll send it to so, her. So I'm taking people. the minutes at this meeting, which is what we agreed last time. You're taking the minutes at this meeting. That's I'm correct. That I was reminded of that. A Excellent. Little so I didn't and, know. um... <laughs> And I don't have everybody's email, so Athena will have to send that list that I sent to her. All since Athena's absent, um, I'll I guess go to. Oh, there's a chat. Actually, here's what I can do. I bet I can chat people. And hmm, did that make it? J Julian, I can yeah. email that list because I got the email. I can send the. But that list, forward that list to members of the committee. It's just a, who's taking notes. It's a ministerial duty, so it doesn't run afoul of any of the open meeting law communications. Okay, excellent. That's perfect. Thank you so much. My, my suggestion is just that at each meeting, we make sure that that person is aware of that. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, I we'll, can send we'll, out, we'll do both. I can send out a reminder for future meetings um, that's, that should resolve that. Since we're speaking of the minutes, um, do we want to approve the minutes now quickly? Uh, has have folks read them? Do we want to share them, Lynn? I I read them and I sent a couple of small edits to Athena. Um, okay. I'm, I'm assuming that the the copy that's out there now on the website is the name of the updated one. I, I didn't actually hear back from her, so I can't confirm that. Okay, got it. Um, would you mind screen sharing real quick so we can approve the minutes, Lynn? I have a question about the minutes while we're getting that yeah. together. Uh, is it standard form that we um, don't cite uh, which members raised which questions or made particular comments? Are we make every? I'm not. It seemed that it was. Um, not anonymized, but more general than specific <clears throat> committee members. Just a question to know for future. That uh, that was a format that uh, the council uses and that was sent to me by Athena. And so for discussion, they just have bullet points of the points that came up. So, okay. Um, it, but I tried to make sure that every everybody's voice was bulleted. So. Yep. Excellent, okay. Um, so I'll make the motion to approve the minutes, if I have a second. So moved. There's a second. Excellent. Um, I made the motion. Bernie seconded. Uh, I'll let Lynn finish scrolling, and then we can vote on it. What happens in the event that, like, with Ken sent revisions or comments? Um, those go to Athena, and then Athena will work them in to the minutes themselves, I believe. Okay, so the ones we're looking at are the ones that contain those. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. I would assume, Ken, is that correct? Um, I didn't, I'm trying to find the, uh, I, I wasn't able to follow the okay. principle. Um, I just remember that I changed the Collins, it was called the Collins Institute, it's actually called the Collins Center. Um, mm -hmm. I could not find the Collins Institute on the web and I, and I bumped into it later. So um, just in case anybody else had that problem. Um, Got it. That, okay. that was the level of edit. Okay, got it. Um, that's that's a Scrivener's error and can be fixed anytime. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so I'm an I. I will go by seeing it on the screen. Meg? I've just, I've 
didn't see them earlier, but I've speed reading them. I guess I'm an I. Okay. Bernie? Yes. Uh, Ken? Aye. Uh, Erica? Yes. Raphael? Aye. Dan? Aye. Awesome. Your mic's working. We can hear you. Great. So that um, is everybody. That's unanimous. So we've approved the minutes. Wow, um, I'm an I too. <laughs> oh, sorry. I didn't see you. My bad. <laughs> um, okay. Let's uh, bring back the agenda. And I guess I'll just have it so that I realize when the screen's being shared, I can't see everyone. So if you want to make a comment, um, just raise your hand in the raise hand function in Zoom so I can actually see you. Excellent. Um, thank you, Lynn. Uh, so now that we've done all of the more minuscule things, we'll get into the meat and potatoes of this meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll go to agenda point number four, uh, which is discussion of committee scope and priorities. Um, so do we want to have a discussion on that? If anyone has anything they'd like to say, please raise your hand. Yep, go right ahead, Andy. Just wanted to refer folks to the committee charge, which is in the document center. Um, and it basically says that, you know, the, the committee shall develop an understanding of mass law and the existing home rule charter, to raise public awareness of the charter review process through various community outreach efforts, develop and deploy a variety of feedback mechanisms, i.e. surveys, invitations to testify, public meetings, focus groups, et cetera, analyze feedback from the community prior to initial preliminary and final reports, hold a public forum on the on a preliminary report, and then review, propose, and report on process deliberations, drafts, and recommendations in three stages, initial, preliminary, and final um, reports. So that, that's in the charge. Basically, I would summarize it as we're supposed to do a bunch of outreach, and we're supposed to do a, a, a bunch of research, and then we're supposed to distill that into recommendations for um, changes that could be made to the charter. And I guess I would add that what I've heard from several folks is that it might be useful to group those recommendations into sort of three categories. One is what the town council can vote to do locally and just make it happen. One is um, the things that the council could recommend to the legislature and the legislature could approve. And then the third would be things that would require a, a new charter commission. And I just want to be clear that we are sort of, if we're going through the charter, we can all make any recommendations we want. It's just a matter of what processes after that would be necessary to achieve it, if that makes sense. Um, so any other comments discussion on uh, i would not i'm sorry i mean uh i see meg then bernie um let me just see if i see anybody else yeah meg then bernie um I, I try to use the raise the raise hand raise hand yeah raise, <laughs> raise your real hand or raise your computer hand computer hand is what i was thinking but that's okay go ahead i did, I did it yeah um i strongly endorse of uh, the three categories that andy just read uh while we can't recommend things that aren't within our scope, I think if we want a legitimate, meaningful participation and we hear things from people, we should report that. Yeah. And uh, otherwise, it's hard to feel that our outreach and all this uh, reaching out for people's opinion is going to be valuable if we screen it to be this sort of more narrow channel. I understand, though, that what we're able to actually recommend that the council change is, is, is uh, specific. Now I've got to un uh, Bernie? undo my hand, yeah. lower hand, there it is. Yeah, I <laughs> would, um, I would be careful to, um, I would not want to report, say we're going to report everything we hear because some of what we will hear will be unworkable, unusable, um, maybe unnecessary. I think if you look through the uh, sample reports that we got, um, the there was like a single paragraph saying this came up, but we're not going to deal with it here. Um, I think where we have something in either rank choice voting it would be one of those topics. I think where you 
you really do need to have legislative action. I think that's that's part of our charter that we need to have firmed up by the legislature. I think <clears throat> so. That would be uh, that would be something to do. But I'm I'm not willing to uh, come up with a catalog of every idea we've heard and and report it. Uh, and, and as I said in the previous meeting, we have a form of government that's approved by the voters. Uh, I'm not interested in relitigating the form of government. In fact, we can't choose. We can't. That's one of those things we can't change. Um, I, I would like to focus on making the current charter more effective and improving the operation of the council. That should be our priority. Uh, in in my humble opinion. Thanks. Uh, Erica and then Dan. Thank you. Um, I just want to be cautious that we don't sort of decide now what we're going to do with the um, with the breadth of public comments that we might receive, which may or may not fit neatly into categories that we're outlining right now as we sort of set out on this work. I think that the the categories that Andy outlined are, are based around sort of functional destinations for, for where the recommendations go, which is great. I think that's a really great way to approach it. I would I would predict that we would get a range of comments that don't share our view that there that there's a sort of functional end or a clear sort of um, way to achieve what is being expressed in the public comment. And I think that there's I don't want to foreclose the possibility that there may be a public comment that doesn't know how to achieve itself, but has some value and some worth to be included in a future report. So I just want to say, I think having a, a scope of work that includes some categories based around the ultimate end that we're after is is fabulous. But I don't I don't want those buckets to be exclusive um, to the extent that we leave things out. Um, and I wanted to ask, while I have the floor for two seconds, just if Andy could repeat those categories so that I can have them in my mind. And if that was your notion or if that came from somewhere. Yeah, go right ahead, Andy, and then Dan. Um, yeah, I, I, I think this may have been in the League of Women Voters uh, structure. Um, and I've heard several other folks say, well, there's some things that the town council can do. So so, so that's one category of things that can actually be, uh, that aren't you know precluded by a state law or whatever that the town council can vote locally to just implement. And then there are some things that might require getting legislative permission. Um, and then the third category is things that would be comprehensive enough that they would require a new charter commission in order to make them happen. Thank you. Sounds good. Uh, Dan? Yeah, I I think that, um, you know, Andy's categories, what's really important about them is it reflects the full you know, it's in, in the repeated language of, you know, the, uh, of the Constitution, of, of the general laws and the Charter, it says all of this can be changed. It says in 9.1 of the Charter, all of it is on the table. And I think it's really important for that to be, you know, Bernie, I understood, you know, Bernie's comment, which I certainly understand the desire not to relitigate but the law is really clear that, that a community can change its charter as it sees fit, as long as it follows the processes laid out in the law. And so I think that Andy's categories capture that, the scope of the law, and that is that is really important. And it, it doesn't matter whether we want to revisit something. If, I mean, if you look at, um, you know, a number of the, the ones I posted here, they don't they actually say all those reports right at the beginning we they they put their their most divisive issues front and center so i think this process can um it doesn't exclude and then the question of what's wise to do what do we want to do what how much of an opinion do we hear that's what we're going to find out and and including everything we hear no but if there's a significant current of opinion of whatever kind 
that that is a thing that I see our purpose is, is just to uncover those things if they're there and to give people voice to those things if that's what they choose to do. Yeah. Um, Bernie, you, you've already spoken, so I'm going to give it to Ken and then I'll come back to you. Okay. Um, thanks. I'll pick the hand out. Um, when I looked at the the other uh, Charter Review Commission reports, uh, Watertown in particular, um, I noticed that they used the term, you know, these these the recommendations that they had, the 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 first set of recommendations they had in the in the the summary of the introduction, were unanimous. All all members liked these recommendations. Again, wh whatever the town council does with them, they do with, they do with them. But I wasn't clear, and maybe we don't have to worry about that now. But are we under the expectation of unanimous agreement on recommendations? Because in Watertown. They said, he, you know, here are the unanimous recommendations. Here are the ones that we were not uh, unanimous on. So it's, it still was a list. It still was shared in the report. I just don't know if we have a, um, some sort of a, a majority rule that we should be keeping in mind. Yeah, I, I would just say I think that, like, obviously, if we can all agree on stuff, that's great. But if there's something we don't agree on and it's brought to a vote, I would assume it's majority rule, um, as in what the recommendation will be, but we could certainly note where um, that dissent was, who voted in favor, who didn't. I know that's how it was done in the uh, in the Charter Commission um, when it used to be, when they were doing that. Bernie? Yeah, I, I don't have a challenge. I'm not challenged by any of these categories. In fact, this, you know, we went through this process, or I went through this process with another committee when we reviewed the town's bylaws and mapped them to the city charter. And in fact, we came up with a list of this is what we can change. This is what the council needs to, to, to take up in the future. Um, this is why we're going to need to get some additional permissions or clarifications from the legislature. And here's some ideas. What I am cautioning about is that we focus on the fir first things first, which is making this charter more effective and giving the, the council some ideas about how to be more effective in its, its, uh, uh, in, in its governing. That's one. And two, I don't want to give anyone the impression that we're going to simply report every single thing we heard. I guess that's a waste of time and it's not a good use of our time. I mean, we're we're here to 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 filter some of these ideas out. And 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 that doesn't mean that we're gonna you know not comment on some things, but it does mean that we're gonna have to exercise some editorial <laughs> review here in terms of what we report. So this doesn't become a laundry list of these are things that people mention. That's where I'm going to. Um, Andy? Um, yeah, I, I think uh, I hadn't, you know, I hadn't really considered how, how we how we get to um, the degree of unanimity or majority or whatever, but I, I do think that we should be casting a wide net to collect as many ideas as possible, but then I think we do need to apply our judgment. Um, I think we were, we were you know, appointed this committee to use some judgment to, to, to sort those things out. And maybe there's, um, you know, a, a great, some sort of way of um, having certain ideas that we support, you know, maybe unanimously, some things we support by majority, and then other things we've heard, which we don't take a position on. I, you know, I don't know if that's too wishy-washy or whatever, but um you know the most useful would be things that we're unanimous on i'm sure but you know there may be other ideas that we're just not going to be unanimous on but they seem to be reflected and and resonate with a majority so i you know i i don't know what our process will be but i think there's this combination of casting a wide net collecting as much feedback from the public and as many source you know research sources or whatever expert sources as possible and then we have to use some judgment um, as a committee and, and come up with sort of a refined list that, that we think is the best we can do. Whoops. I gotta use my hand here. Oh yeah, Meg, go ahead. Um I, I don't think I haven't heard anyone say we should 
report on every single thing we hear from anybody. I think what Andy just said reflects what I think most of us have said is that we need to, if, if there's a, a significant amount of opinion about some topic that isn't in the exact scope of what we're supposed to do, we could still report it. I think it's under category two of what Andy, uh, you know, recommend, we might make a recommendation. Uh, let me not, I'm not going to look at the three points very well right now, but it seems to me, I don't, I haven't heard anyone say we should report everything we hear, but we more that we shouldn't be shy away from opinions that represent a significant amount of people or a significant effort uh, because they don't fit exactly into what the charter review scope is. Something in the middle, just sort of what Andy summarized, use our judgment. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't see any other hands. I'll give a, another. oh, Erica, go ahead. Thank you. Just um, maybe to put a, a fine point on it, the if the agenda item is we're discussing our scope and our and our priorities, I think that's a slightly different conversation where I feel like what we're talking about here is a little bit like writing the table of contents for the report when we don't know the the, the <laughs> full range of the comments that we're going to get. Let's edit a little closer to the finish line is my yeah. suggestion and my kind of agenda in making that comment. Um, I don't. I don't know how to anticipate what public comment might bring in this process. My interest, my priority, if, the, if that's the agenda item, is engaging in a public process that's as sort of you know open and um, and engaging as possible. And I don't want to uh, my I don't want to um, and anticipate what we might get to such an extent that we'd um, have a pre-filled report. That's all. Andy, go ahead. Um, I, I know that sections of interest in the charter is number seven on the agenda, but that might offer a framework for us to think about you know, how we're going to set priorities or how we're going to be thinking about our scope because, uh, so I guess I would just say that maybe one way of organizing how we're thinking about this is to look at the sections of the charter, the, ch the chapters or whatever. And one is legislative and one is executive and one is finance and so on. Um, that those might be categories that we use for collecting, you know, ideas about how, you know, for, for organizing ideas about what needs to be tweaked or changed. Gotcha. I'll just offer a comment myself that I was thinking is like, I wouldn't want us to, and I'm just using this as an example, it's probably not even actually an existent form of government, but for the, for the purposes of an example, I wouldn't want us to say we get a hundred members of the public who all write in and say, we really want an open town meeting no select board and a mayor instead of a select board, right? Say a bunch of people write in and say, that's the type of government we want. Um, even though that would require a new charter commission, approval by the state legislator, et cetera, I would hate for us to completely ignore that as non-existent or not possible. I would instead recommend us to review it, discuss it, make a recommendation on it, and at least include that a large portion of the public believed that in our report, if that makes any sense. That seems like we're giving people at least some voice in the matter where they feel like, okay, an idea that has a lot of public participation will be considered, even if it's not possible, it will go back to um, the committee and the committee will discuss it, so to speak. Um, Dan, then Bernie. So one of the things about this that I also saw in other um, communities reports is the idea that we are part of a process. And so we're, you know, other committees have said, you know, we, we change this because this didn't work for us for future committees. And also that you're recording things so that in four years, people can say, well, no one was talking about this then, but now a lot of people are talking about it or, that current of opinion that we heard, some of them have, has really grown. 
it, it's a it's a um, it's a time series in a way of, of of opinion, and we play that role also. Yeah, thanks, Bernie. Uh, yeah, we we also um, I, one of the things I I see happening and uh, would like to uh, again caution about is, is people look at other states and they come up with great ideas from other states that just won't happen in Massachusetts because it's Massachusetts law. And I think we have to be prepared to say that, well, this is something that needs to be studied by another group in another time, and it needs to go to the legislature. Um, so as long as we're willing to do that, that's a, you know, that will be helpful. Uh, I would not like to spend, again, lots of time um, I'll throw, throw an example of, uh, uh, you, you know, that would, to use your example, uh, Julian, of, uh, you know, the open town meeting, uh, I really doubt that somebody would walk in and say that because the open town meeting government is pretty much limited to, uh, to New England <laughs> and uh, wasn't adopted anywhere else. Um, but, you, you know, to simply say to them, well, that's a good idea. That's a nice idea. Well, thank you for that thought. But we're going to we're going to list it as possible legislative action or refer to the legislature and leave it at that not to get into extensive discussions about stuff that we can't hope to do um or, or you know we you have to do some serious work and some serious coalition building to uh, to get things going uh, some of the things i'd like to look at too um <clears throat> overall is time and how time gets used, um, how time gets described in the charter, and how time gets used by the council. Uh, we also have all the council's uh, the council's rules and of orders and procedures, which I think we can we can look at as well, because that'll reflect back on how the council sees the charter and what the council sees the charter allowing it to do. Um, so, so uh, it not it's it's not simply just sections of the charter; it's things or processes within the charter that repeat itself. Uh, so we're gonna talk about the budget um, would be one area, uh, one functional area, but also within that, where time comes up, um, you know, we have a particular problem because we have a, a regional school with attempts to operate on a different calendar than we do. So, I, you know, I, I think it's a good idea to fall through the charter um, begin to indicate areas where people would like to uh, um, would like to, to to work on, but also to keep in mind these broader themes that run through it. Cool. Thanks, Bernie. Um, Raphael. Yeah, what, what Erica shared resonated with me. I think in some ways we're jumping to analysis of feedback without sort of. Uh, really centering like some of the elements of our charge in terms of just raising public awareness, trying to engage different sort of community folks in this process and hearing from them. So just thinking more about like the, the variety of feedback mechanisms that we could employ, utilize before like jumping into what that analysis might look like. Um, really want to have us really focus on those elements too, because I think you want as many community members involved in this process as possible. Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, I guess to put a point on it, um, do we want to make a motion of something we sort of agree to here, or do we want to say, okay, we have everybody's thoughts to guide us on this and um, we'll move to the next agenda item? Which would people prefer, sort of whether we want to make it a formality or not? May? I don't think we need to make it a formality, more an con ongoing conversation, because making a formality would require language and take <laughs> yeah. time. Apart. We've already spent a, a quarter of our meeting. If Fair it's a amount of time. Sounds but good. Me, also, now that I have one, um, is it helpful to have the screen share, or would it be better to see each other at this point? Yeah. Um, I think it's probably better to see each other. Yeah, thanks, Lynn. Mm -hmm. Thank um, okay, so I'll give a last call for comments on that, and then we'll move on to agenda item number five. 
I, I don't want to quite let go of some of the stuff that uh, Rachel said and, and Erica said, and it's in terms of we, you, you know, I, I think it would be good to have the town's communications director come before the committee, talk, get some ideas from her about how we can do outreach, what mechanisms the town has available to it, um, begin to catalog some interest groups in town we can contact individually or as a, as a committee, uh, Julian, over your signature as chair, um, because that's going to be, that, that's going to play a big role in what we, what we do. And I said, when we started, I'm, I'm not interested in hearing from the usual suspects because they're going to show up anyway. Um, I'd like to be able to get some, some feedback from folks who uh, up until this point may not have an interest in how the town's right. Yeah, sounds good. Um, so I'll, yeah, Meg? Isn't that item six still to come? Could I see the agenda, please? <laughs> that is item six. Outreach, yeah, outreach, yeah, you're, you're that's, correct. Outreach planning. That's number six. Um, I'm, a, so I'm agreeing with the point. I just think this is. Jumped ahead, I'm sorry. That's okay. If this, if this is our discussion about participation, then I don't think we're ready to move on. I'm agreeing with Bernie. But it's okay. Yeah. Do we want to have a discussion about number five and then number six, or do we want to have a discussion about number six and then come back to number five, I guess? Yeah, let's do number six and uh, we can finish our discussion on number six and then go back to number five. Meg, go ahead. Um. So, so I'm sorry to talk, I hope I don't talk too much. Um, I've, some of you know me, uh, have put a lot of thought into what is meaningful participation versus just participation. And I think we've all know that when someone says, we're having a public meeting in the town room about something or other and everybody can come. And then people make random speeches one after the other. It's hard to feel sometimes that that's meaningful. And it seems we have an opportunity to think more deeply about how to get participation and input that's that's more than that. Um, and I invite us to ask each of our, us ask ourselves when we felt we've participated in a process that, that felt meaningful, that we were heard. And just to, I'll just say this once, and then you don't have to hear from me again, but uh, one of the things obviously is to have different formats to meet in different places to figure out where people are, where they're used to going. Um, and so that it's easy for people to participate. I think it's important that people know ahead of time what the topic is and the questions, and particularly if it's framed in a way of, we're thinking about this and we're trying to get input about this and that. We've had this idea that not, not necessarily too complicated, but not just what do you think about the council, but more specific so people so the input comes as we're having these discussions in a way that's informing what we're actually talking about at that time i think it's good in that same sense to have a context why this information is sought why it's relevant how this will be helpful to us so it's not just come and tell us what you think but this would be helpful i think um one of the things we and it's frustrated me in public comment in different kinds of meetings is that apparently there's no because we don't want debate, there's actually no back and forth of any sort. Like for example, I think in some cases it would be so helpful to say, could you explain when you use that word what you meant? Just asking for clarification. And I think we're all sophisticated enough that we know the difference between asking for clarification, which can be done in an argumentative, argumentative way, which is not good, but asking for clarification when we really don't understand something and arguing with someone, or we can help each other to not debate when there's a feedback session, I think to not have any clarification or that's interesting, what did you mean when you said that? It makes it harder for people to feel they've their input has been heard. Yeah, um, I, I would and agree. I, and so, so and the last point is um, an opportunity to get back to let people know that something happened or I don't think you can certainly can't get back to every single person but if there's some overriding we've go to a particular community or neighborhood and there's some overriding theme that comes up that's relevant to how the town government works the possibility not the obligation but the possibility that they might hear back <laughs> what right 
thought or to say, oh, come, listen to the meeting. If, if our public outreach and participation encouraged more people to come to the meetings as observers, that would be great. And then to participate when that topic comes up so that there's like a conversation. And again, we don't have to agree. You can't agree with everybody, uh, but people don't participate if they don't think um, they're going to be heard or that it's right. right. I'll, uh, I'll just interject. Not that I disagree with any of your ideas. I think they're great. Right. Um, yeah. Just the timing. Try to stick to three minutes ish. That would be great. Sorry. Was no that problem. over? Three <laughs> I think sorry. so. No, I, made, um, I could never take notes because then I blab on. Anyway, no, sorry. No problem. <laughs> um, a lot a little about what I'd like to say about participation is I think we need to make sure we do not just have public forums in town hall where we hear from people, let people have their public comments, and that's it. I think we need to make us make ourselves present in many different areas of the community, whether that means we host a barbecue at Mill River where we invite people and go back and forth um, and actually really have a discussion and tease out some of these questions. Um, more informal, maybe rent a room in the boulders or at Groff Park and uh, have a discussion and invite people there. Have an online uh, an online survey or something that folks can fill out um, and attach that to like an Instagram or Facebook social media of some sort. I think all these ideas might be helpful not just to actually be able to get in more discussion with people rather than just listening, but also to hear from people who might not be the quote unquote, as Bernie says, the usual suspects. Because the other thing I think that's worth noting is the usual suspects tend to be, um, not all, but tend to be white, wealthy, and older. And I think we as a town are not all white, wealthy, and older people. Um, so well, I, I'm only two out of the three, right? So yeah, the I wealth think part, the wealth part has escaped me. Um, to hear from other perspectives in town, and I, those are just some ways that might work to do it. Other comments, folks? In the um, I'm sorry, go ahead, go Aaron, ahead. then yeah. Bernie, and then Ken. Um, so the, pu the public outreach and communication piece, both outgoing and incoming, is a was a big motivator for me in, in getting participating in this um, in this work, and so I really I I really care a lot about this um, issue. Um, I have a lot of ideas. I don't know. This does not seem like the forum in which to nail them all down, but I have lots of ideas for very venues, forums, platforms, technology that might be assisting us in our, in this process. Um, just broadly speaking, in the in the frame of priorities of public comment, which I think is the level everybody's speaking about, which is great, the multiplicity of channels is something I just wanted to echo that we we're going to get different comments. The more the more we can sort of multiply the possibility of channels for this committee to communicate to and from the public is going to improve our our process and our and our reach the breadth of our reach i wanted to open us to the possibility that this kind of speaks to meg's frustration with public comment being a kind of one way one person at a time sequential process i want us to be open to the idea that comment might come in the form of conversation uh, as opposed to one person coming up down to the front of the room to the microphone, make your comment and then go sit down, so to speak, um, that we might want to think about designing forms of comment that can actually engage not just uh, residents to committee members, but sort of resident to resident um, and that we can um, facilitate or just observe or just take notes. Um, it doesn't have to be coming through us. Um, I also wanted to um, include the idea of a question period somehow that we could have the submission of questions be part of our the feedback that we solicit, not just comments, fully formed ideas that come in the shape of suggestions, but questions for the committee or for the larger Amherst bodies of government. Um, 
And I just really want to prioritize the idea that public outreach is a round trip concept. It's, <laughs> it's not one way. It goes both ways. And I want us to be really <laughs> cognizant and attentive of that in everything that we do. That's all for now, but that's just my framing of how I think about this. No, thank you so much. Uh, Bernie and then Ken. Well, I thought Ken had his hand up uh, oh, before me. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Ken. Oh, thanks, Bernie. Um, so I, I was going to say something to, to similar to what Erica just said, and that is let's be as creative and and just go a little crazy with the ideas uh, at first about uh, tools in which in which uh, to engage, we can judge whether you know what what we're capable of doing after that. But let's let's just be wide open with it. So that's more and a lot of what Erica just said. Thanks so much. One of the Ernie? one of the uh, uh, one of the things that uh, <laughs> that's been reported to me time and time again that makes people crazy is somebody shows up at the start of the meeting, makes a comment, and there's no pushback, there's no response, there's no nothing. It's a little bit of theater that goes on. Uh, meetings are always, you know, public meetings like that are always, always th theatrical in some respects. Um, but we don't have to, you, you know, there's a difference between the sort of mandated public comment period where any citizen can show up and talk to the committee about anything that troubles a citizen. That's theater. Um, there's nothing keeping us from scheduling a discussion right. with right. whoever shows up at the meeting um, or scheduling um, discussion sessions, uh, whether it's in, if it's individual, and we'll have to get into this a little bit with the open meeting law, because I, I think there are plenty of opportunities that don't want to follow the open meeting law to have individual or a couple of committee members mm -hmm. Go to a coffee in a neighborhood, um, invite people, have be invited to someone's home. Um, it doesn't constitute a public meeting, but does offer some chance to to get some input um, to the to the committee. Uh, so I, I would not want to think in public comment in terms of what we see at every single meeting, which is the first few minutes people show up and say whatever whatever's on their mind. Uh, we should be willing to schedule discussions, and this can get come on a little bit later once we get a better framework for how we want to attack the problem. Um, but you know, we we can we can have that give and take between ourselves and um, people in a formal way at a meeting and in informal ways at other discussions. Uh, tag along with the, the counselors. I'll have to do district meetings. Tag along with the council at a district meeting and say we're going to hijack your your district meeting for this evening and. Talk about how the how the council works and how the government works. Uh, there, there are plenty of ways to do that. Yeah, thank you. That was excellent. Um, other comments on topic number six, Andy. Um, <clears throat> I'm just trying to in imagine, like, even as somebody who's on the committee and who was on the charter commission, if somebody just says, you know. What do you think should be changed about our government? It's a pretty hard question. Pretty hard question to to, mm -hmm. to answer. And and um. So I think, and I think maybe piggybacking on something I, I believe Meg said earlier, which is that you get, you want to give people context, and you know I can see this being an iterative process where, in some ways, we we cast the wide net and just like what do you you know. We're tonight we're talking about the town council or tonight we're talking about, you know, public participation or whatever it is. And then we sort of, you know, come up with some things. Here's some things we've heard. Now we take it back out and say, how do you what do you how do you react to this kind of thing? So so giving people something that they can respond to. Um, you know, and not just blue skying it all the time, I think might 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 make it easier for people to hang on, you know, to grab on to, you know, we, what it is we're trying to do. So I, I guess that's just sort of, how do you frame this discussion so it's actually, um, you know, accessible by people who aren't as involved as, as some of us, you know, as most of us are. Yeah, thank you. Erica? Thank you. Um, I had a sort of a, a point of, procedural clarification around this that I wanted to ask. I don't know if we can get the answer without Athena, but maybe um, just put it to the group, 
which is, uh, are we at all empowered or able to do any sort of subcommittee work? Yeah. Does anybody know yeah. the frame of that? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, certainly. go ahead, Andy. Go ahead, Andy. Yeah. I, I think there's a difference between a, a, a sub, an official subcommittee and maybe a working group. Um, I just don't know yeah. how that works with a, the open <clears throat> meeting restrictions. So but if we had a couple of people who were interested in brainstorming some categories on this and they wanted to, and, and um, the idea would be that they would go and generate something, you know, something below a quorum of this group would, would come up with a list of things that they thought would be worth framing a discussion for the next meeting. I think that would be okay as, sort of an ad hoc working group designated by this team and that they the the role of them would be to provide a basis for discussion for the broader group. Um, I think that's, we had a little bit of a discussion uh, beforehand, just thinking about, you know, can we have subcommittees? And um, I think there, there's a difference between an official subcommittee, which requires uh, that to be posted and be a public meeting right. versus, you know, a couple of people that are designated to go off and, you know, come up with a format for discussion next time. Julian, does that sound right? Yeah, no, that that's exactly what I was thinking to say. Um, other questions, comments, ideas? On point six, yeah, go ahead. I, I mean, I guess I, I would like the idea of, there's been a couple of people who have, um, certainly Erica, um, who have indicated interest in maybe producing something that we could respond to next time. And, and you know, I, I guess I'd like to, um, you know, encourage that to happen. If, 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 if a, a couple of people wanted to go and create, here's, here's some ideas for how we're gonna collect feedback and then we can then respond to that next time. I think that would be really useful. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that that would be, that would be really helpful. Um, Erica, would you have an interest in doing that? Yeah, I would have an interest in in being uh, in a working group around okay. the idea yeah. of what are what are uh, what's a proposal to this committee around what are some what are some options or possibilities for creating opportunities for for public feedback. Right. No, I think that makes that makes sense. Um, Andy and Erica, would you have an interest in working on that together? Uh, I I wasn't yeah. really volunteering for that, but I was okay. noting that Rafael had also meant had also noted you know mentioned uh, various ways of getting feedback you know a broad net. So I just wanted to you know support that support his interest if he's interested. Yeah, absolutely. Dan. Yeah, I would I would be interested in doing that also. Sure. I mean, I think a lot of the things Erica said about what motivated me to do this are that kind of outreach. So and it can also be everyone, if people have ideas, we can send them, we can all send them in and, and put them together in that way. That if, if it's a working group, yeah. that would be one of our functions. Excellent. Um, Thank you. Dan and Erica, do you guys want to sort of tag team that? And if anyone else is interested, feel free to speak up. Yes. And it, um, absolutely. And if anyone else wants to participate, please, I don't know, reach out here or, or yeah. elsewhere. You just, I also, you just have to make certain that we're not communicating with the majority of the committee at any given time. Right. Because that runs the follow of the open meeting law. But, yeah. you know, if, uh, if Dan and Erica go back and forth over these ideas and then come to the committee formally, you know, that, uh, if yeah. they come to the committee by by posting or uh, giving something to Erica to post for a discussion, that's that's perfectly okay. That's what the law, as far as I understand it. Raphael? I was going to say, I don't mind producing and sharing with chair to review at another meeting. I think all of us perhaps could consider like, what are some feedback approaches, mechanisms that we could employ, yeah. we could review collectively. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I don't mind producing something that I send into you that could Please, be shared that, that would be awesome yeah no that would be great and we can we can literally just screen share it right here and go through section by section i think that's a great idea um erica then meg 
Thank you. I just wanted to uh, add that this question that I raised about having a working group, I'm glad that there's some consensus about this is potentially a way to work, um, is also maybe relevant for other areas that we might, how we might want to consider breaking down the work that's ahead of us, um, whether it's topic based or some sort of subspecialty like public feedback, but like we might want to consider um, the working group that's not actually a subcommittee um, that's tasked with some specific piece. Huh. Meg? Um, just because I didn't understand and I'm taking the minutes, did we just say that anyone who has a point to send to the, to um, Erica and Dan sends it to everyone at the same time? No. Okay, good. I didn't think so. But whatever, they'll gather. But I love the idea. I like the idea of being able to send the two of them and anyone else who joins this working group. And, 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 then, and then at, at some point, um, they will forward those ideas as a whole to the okay. committee. So yeah. everybody in the committee gets them and it gets posted to the uh, website uh, Great. so that it becomes a public document. Raphael, did you... Go ahead. Okay, great. Um, your hand's still up. That's why I asked. Cool. <laughs> awesome. Um, um, Andy? Yeah, I, I just... Um, I don't... I just want to make sure we're that we're not having too much uh, deliberation outside of the meetings by everybody. Um, I think we... My 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 preference, I guess, would be that we have a couple of people designated to do their best thinking on this and bring a list, and then we each make our lists, and then we we look at the list that they bring at the next meeting and say, "Hey, okay. I I also thought of this other thing that's not on the list." That's other than that's having it all sent mm -hmm. to Erica and you know uh, Dan. Erica and Dan can work on it, but with too many people, there's the open meeting law, and we don't want to have more than three. So I think having just Erica and Dan, and then everybody else, sort of coming back to the meeting with it instead is probably a good idea. Okay, so we changed the answer to my last question, just changed, right? Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> my, uh, again, my, my suggestion is that, that, that they are the working group that we also think each think individually about what we think, and then they come back and we see, we respond to what they produce by improving it with anything they haven't thought of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So I, I encourage them then to, replay in their minds and I'll try to get it in the minutes. I'm gonna to have to watch the tape. Some of the things that were said in the last 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Some of the things we might say, how about a meeting, you know, blah, 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 this kind of thing, or convert, you know, I think a yeah. lot was really interesting things were suggested already. Mm -hmm. Excellent. The minutes will really help with that. Yeah, we have to listen oh. to watch the tape, that's for sure. Just in the um just in the essence of time, I'm gonna move us on We've discussed number six. We've discussed number four. I'm gonna move us on to point number five. Um, and as long as does anybody have any other discussions about number six? I don't see any. Um, so number five is decide the role of and questions for the legal counsel um, and the potential of having consultants. So any, I guess I'll start with do people have strictly questions for KP law that they would like to ask. Um, and I could jot them down in my notes um, or something like that. And then after that, we'll sort of have a discussion of what, what the role is and maybe a consultant. I know Andy was saying something about that earlier, that there's some state grants and stuff we can go after. Um, and then we'll go on to seven and then eight um, and then 10. I see Ken and then Meg. Um, I guess uh, without sounding too repetitive, it's a question about questions. Um, this idea about what, uh, or not this um, level that kicks a recommendation into the state legislature's hands. Uh, ranked choice voting was mentioned before, but when we when we field things, I'm like, I'm I'm not sure if is is the is the legal firm somebody that can answer those kinds of questions about what 
what we can't even address because it's a state legislature thing? Or is that, am I, can I get that information somewhere else? I, I'm, I'm not totally sure what their, what the thing is exactly. I think the legal firm can address that, but um, if someone else who's more knowledgeable than me knows the answer, feel free to blurt it out. Um, Meg? Oh, just this agenda topic. <clears throat> um, the role, the role of in questions for legal counsel and political consultants, is it the role in questions for legal counsel and the role in questions for potential consultants? Or no, is it it's the role of potential consultants is what I meant. Like, do we want to see consultants, how, et cetera? And then the other one is what questions do we have for legal counsel? I That's my bad. I should have phrased that more clearly. So those are two yeah. different topics. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. We might get clarification for the le of legal counsel on the working group thing. Yeah, can I jot it down your question, um, Bernie? Yeah. Um, yes, KP Law can and will, or certainly can. They've written legislation. Um, you know, KP Law can certainly advise us on what is, you know, what needs to be taken up by the legislature versus what the council can do by a two-thirds vote versus what requires a charter commission, if that comes down to that. Uh, what we did when we were reviewing the town's bylaws was we basically built a list of questions for um, legal counsel, for KP law. Then what we did was we looked at what questions they've already answered because some of our, our questions were du duplicative, answered them before for somebody else. So we already had, we didn't need the uh, legal counsel's opinion. We had it, we had it already. Right. Uh, KP Law also produces a regular, or they did, I would produce a regular kind of update for all their legal clients that covers broad issues. Um, so we may not need um, to refer something to them. We just may need to ask, can we see KP Law's opinion on right. working groups versus committees? Uh, so, so let's let's uh, you know let's build a list as we go on. Yeah. Uh, to uh, to as to what we what we want to what we want to ultimately refer to counsel. Yeah, that's a great uh, idea. Um, that and, also that also yeah. saves money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. I was like, that's smart. Um, yeah, good thinking, Meg. Did you have something? I just forgot to lower my hand. Sorry. Okay, got it. Um, other questions or on this topic, I'll just say myself that um andy brought this idea up to me which was having uh potentially looking at state grants and that sort of thing um if you wanted to talk more about that andy go ahead uh sure um i in, included in the minutes i think is a link to a state grant um that i that had been mentioned last time around or referred to the last time around is and it's specific it's a um, I don't have it at, at my fingertips, but basically it's, they've specifically added, um, support of charter, uh, processes and charter review. So, um, it's a, it's, it's a state good government grant or something. And I think it's up to $25,000 or something like that. So, um, in the event that we wanted to get a consultant to work with us, that would be something that we could, um, pursue. Um, you know, I, I don't know, uh, Dan, I think you had, you had prepared a bunch of, um, or pulled together a bunch of, uh, reports from other places. And I don't know if your sense is that they used consultants in, in most of those other places or, or not, or if that wasn't visible. Um, cause I, you know, I know that, uh, the Collins center was very helpful or the Collins Institute uh, was very helpful in, um, in the charter development because they had a format for doing that. And I don't know what, what, what they do in terms of charter review, but um, I would imagine some of that could be helpful um, in terms of organizing our work and saving us some time. Yeah, I, I think that's excellent. Thank you. Um, other comments on this agenda point before I move on to our other three? Bernie? Yeah. Um... The Mass, Massachusetts Municipal Association of Managers Group is a form of government committee um, that I was on years ago. Um, 
they that committee is may well be able to help uh, advise at no cost. So what I would like to be able to do is to uh, chat with the um, the uh, admin the manager who chairs that committee and see what they're what they have in the files that we can just get, lay hands on yeah. and what they might be willing to do to help us along and bring that back to the group. Hmm. Excellent. That's that's a great idea. Dan? Um, to answer Andy's question, um, I don't know about consultants. There's certainly, there are a lot of sources in those other, you know, if you dig an extra layer of those other reports, they talk about what they turn to for, for information. So we could um, go through and gather that together, um, I think, pretty easily. And there are definitely some of them were, you know, pamphlets or, or um, documents put out by the state specifically about charter review. So I think there's background info that we can glean from those um, pretty easily. Yeah. And I'll just point out for folks, if you haven't seen it, Dan did a bunch of great research that is in the document center um, attached to the meeting where you can find some pretty in-depth uh, materials and stuff. Yeah, go right ahead. Yeah, in particular, there's one that's just called um, Article Article 89 LXXXIX, and it's an overview of um, the laws, and it basically is saying Charter Commission Special Act. It kind of lays out what the menu is that's made available under the Constitution. So I thought that was a, a helpful summary. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, All righty. So I guess if I don't see any other questions um, or comments for this, I'll move us along. Um, if, if you do have anything else for section five. Yeah, Andy, go ahead. Sorry, I, I just, uh, okay. from in terms of the question about, the question that we had in the last meeting was, you know, when or if we want to reach out to you know, the town's law firm. And it sounds, from what I'm hearing, it sounds like uh, it, it would be helpful if they could give us some sort of guidance on what, what can be done locally versus what can be done by the legislature versus what could require a, a charter commission. But for the most part, we're expecting questions to come, come up as we go along and maybe we would collect those kinds of questions. And maybe we don't even need to know, you know, I, I, I'm conscious that that, that is sort of, the, the end point categories. So maybe we don't even need to know that right up front. There may be other legal questions that come up as we go along. So I'm just trying to figure out like, is there anything we want to ask them now? Or are we saying that we're just going to keep a list of questions? And one of them would be as we're preparing a report, you know, what categories do we put things in and how do we know what right. categories they go in? I don't, I don't know what, what I'm, I'm not hearing a, um, an urgency on this, but I don't know. Ken? Um, I liked what Bernie suggested. If if they've got a repository of questions that have already been asked, FAQs, uh, opinions that they've forwarded about these kinds of things, I want to I want I want to have access to that, or if or ask mm -hmm. for access, I should say, and then um, you know have that be some homework before the next meeting, uh, at least for me. Yeah, that's great, um, Dan. So just to be sure that we're we're on the same page, what I've heard, I mean, it seemed like the, the big legal question last time is what's our scope? What, are, what can we do? And it seems like we have converged on that, that we're going to cast a wide net. I've heard that a bunch. If that's the case, then I don't think we have the urgency for for, you know, legal counsel counsel. And we there's a lot of stuff we can learn about the law and move this forward. And then that fits in well with Bernie's suggestion that we'll, I think we can, we can move forward and, and uh, ask as needed in the future. Yeah, definitely. Other questions, comments, thoughts? <clears throat> so, so then are, are, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> go right ahead. I say. So then are we, are we asking uh, for those kinds of, um, you know, any generic, any already prepared guidance that they might have at this point that can be distributed or or not? I guess I was presuming, yes, any resources they had 
um, like to send us our way and maybe get um, an answer to Ken's question. Um, and then we'd reach out to what Bernie was saying, the mass managers or mass municipal association. One, one of the things I think um, is when we do get into having a discussion about the open meeting law, that will take, um, that will be helpful to understand what subcommittees are and what working groups are and what you can and can't do without uh, running afoul of the, the open meeting law. Um, we're all at some point going to have to uh, uh, take a take a test on it, and um, you can't flunk. But we're all going to have to certify that for the town clerk. Um, so so there's there's that piece, and then the broad the others. So there's the mechanics of of how the group can operate and stay within the open meeting law. That's one set, and we should have that discussion with. Uh, with our staff and then, um, you know, go on from there because none of the questions that have come up um, are new in terms of the wide world of municipal government, uh, including the piece about public comment and, you know, not having a dialogue during the public comment, that kind of stuff. So there's that. And then the second piece of it, which is where I'm really suggesting we keep the list, is when we begin to have question about what can happen with a two thirds vote of the council versus what can happen with a tweak in the state laws by the legislature versus this would require an entire charter commission process to enact. And that will build up over time. Uh, and and that, that's, uh, that's where I think we're gonna, we're gonna end up uh, you know, deciding where those, which bucket things get dropped into and which thing that's dropped in the bucket we're actually going to recommend. <laughs> right. Um, Ken? Um, I'll just echo what Dan said, but I would love to know these things. I don't want to put this on the agenda right for the next meeting necessarily. I I would love to know. Um, and we can push forward with with this getting getting comments. Um, I don't want to muck it up with something that we don't want to do. We don't want to focus on just, just yet, but um, it's going to help me understand our charge a little, a little better. Yeah. Um, other comments on this section? Meg? Um, yeah. I agree with uh, Ken and Dan. Um, in addition, I don't think we have a budget, so we should find out what costs are incurred by talking with the, with the legal counsel. Yeah, uh, that's I'm a good point. Do it and then find out we can't do it. <laughs> yeah, I did speak with Athena about that. We do not have a budget. We um we can ask for legal advice, but the legal advice is done on a contract with the town. So they get a certain amount of legal advice at a certain rate. Um, I don't know what exactly that is, but it is expensive. It's like if you were to consult a private lawyer. Um, so right. I would agree that we should use it sparingly and try to look at the resources like what um, Ken and Bernie were mentioning. Um, other questions or comments on this before I move us along? Andy. Yeah, I just wanna make sure we're clear on what the outcome of this section is. What What are we actually asking for, if anything? I believe what we're looking for is we're going to get in contact with the Mass Municipal Association or Mass Managers Association, we are going to uh, cast a wide net, get as many perspectives as we can, and then narrow it down. And when we have questions about those perspectives, ask KP Law. And then that we are going to explore some of KP Law's regular resources that they hand out to all municipalities, given that it may have, an, have the answer to a question like Ken's. Um, and would allow us to, uh, if it doesn't, we would reach out to them, but would save money by looking through that first before we reach out to them to see if it has the answer. That's my understanding, at least. Correct me if I'm wrong. Thank you. Um, so last call before I move us along. I don't see any other hands. Um, so now I'm going to move us to 
our next agenda item, which is, thank you, Lynn, um, which is number seven, uh, create sections of interest in the charter, because we already discussed six. So, Lynn, would you mind screen sharing the actual Amherst Home Rule Charter? Um, and folks can pull it up on their computers or phones um, or a packet if they have it handy. That might be helpful for folks. Um, and we're really just looking for what are, obviously we have the working group who's going to look into it. Folks can look into it on their own time. But what are things that really, I presume some of us have read the charter before um, <laughs> the meeting. And what are things that really stand out is, geez, we'd like to look at that. Um, and that sort of discussion, if you will, of like, not necessarily what do we want to do, I think that comes later, but sort of, I would like to look at this because blank, and then we can go to the next section. Um, so I guess I can start with two um, pieces of the charter that I would personally like to look at. One is our section 5.5, 5.6, and 5.7, which is just the budgeting and how the budgeting is done. Um, we have a budget that each year gets produced by the town manager, et cetera. And that's been point of a lot of discussion, especially with the school, but also with other issues. Um, and residents often will come in and voice their perspective and then the budget will get voted affirmatively without much changes in two weeks, right? Um, so basically what I'm, I would like us to examine that and look for possible changes to make that uh, section more inclusive to members of the public and also potentially apply some more limits on where the town spends, how the town spends, etc. Um, mm -hmm. Other, I guess I'll introduce that. And then my other one uh, that I actually forgot the subsection of, which is my bad, um, but it is uh, related to who can run for council. I'd like to look at the fact that we currently don't allow um, town staff. And by that, I don't just mean we don't allow um, the town manager and department heads. I mean, anyone, if you are a teacher, if you're a firefighter, if you're a DPW worker, you are not legally allowed to run for council. So I'd like to look at that section, just given that it could potentially um, outline a large section of our town who isn't really allowed to run in the first place if they wanted to. Um, I'll look for other people who have sections they'd like to discuss, um, or comments about mine. Andy? Then, yeah, I was going to say, if we just look at the table of contents, it gives us some broad breakdowns. There's the legislative, the executive, other elected officers, financial, and so on. So I don't know if that just gives us like an initial bucket to say, you know, we're going to go section by section and, and within, you know, the finance one, we're going to look at budget process within, um, you know, elections or other, I don't know exactly where, where it would be, but, you know, those seem like some logical folder type of things that we could be collecting input on, I don't know, as a starting point. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Meg, I saw your hand and then Dan. I'm, I'm just put it down because I'm not sure. Are we going through the things that we're interested in or should we do what Andy suggested? Okay. We're going through the things okay, that so we're I'm interested in elections and the terms. Okay. Excellent. And I'm also interested in broadening public participation mechanisms. Perfect. Dan. I'm interested in the legislative branch. I mean, I'd, I'd really like to, to um, interview, you know, personally to interview counselors, previous counselors, and really see from the inside, what did this, what did working with this, uh, you know, there, there are people who has, have a perspective of this that's, uh, that's worth something. So, yeah, that would interest me. Excellent. Thank you. Um, Erica. Thank you. Um, I, I want to zoom out for just a second, not to be contrarian, but just to, um, to think about um, how we're, how we're talking about areas of interest, because I think there's an inherent tension between what our own areas of interest are. Um, we all care about and have things we'd like to change about town government. Um, 
there's a there's a tension between that and what our charge is as a committee, which is, um, if you really read the charge, it's all, the committee shall. It's really almost all about public uh, public input, public feedback, and us then analyzing the public feedback. So that doesn't mean our areas of interest don't matter, but I just want to propose that maybe there's a way that we can use our areas of interest to become sort of like focus groups to frame a process by which we can outline some questions or some uh, some high points which we want to bring to the public attention to say what what are we what are we as a town feeling about this financial piece or this legislative process as opposed to coming from our own personal feelings about I would like our town council to look or feel different. Yeah. Um, to that end, just as an example, could we have work groups around these areas of interest with a process that among ourselves that culminates in a set of questions or a set of uh, topics that we want to bring to public forum in whatever format that we decide on together um, that's sort of like bringing our focused attention to a particular part of the town charter that then we take that out to the public. Uh, um, I can try to clarify that if I'm if I'm if I've jumbled it, but I'm trying to make a point of clarification that we're coming in with our our sentiments, our agendas, so to speak. And but really what we are meant to do is solicit as much intelligible feedback from our public, uh, from our neighbors as possible. Ken? I took my hand down okay. uh, because I kind of changed my mind. Um, no problem. Yeah. No problem at all. Other, uh, I've noted everybody's um, suggestions. Um, anyone else who has areas of interest? Bernie? Well, as I mentioned before, I'm interested in timing, which runs through the charter for different functions and how that might, um, how changes in that, those scheduling and, and the sequencing might help the council, might help the public understand uh, what the process is uh, to, to really take a look at that. I also, uh, you know, agree with Dan that we want to talk to uh, um, and, and I, I would certainly like to talk to counselors, current and former, uh, about what their Im impressions were and look at the council's rules of proceedings, which is another way of interpreting the, the charter, um, to see where that can get, um, that can get reworked and improved if, if, if in fact it needs it. Um, so those are, those are a couple of things that I'd like to be able to, I'd like to be able to look at. Um, they're not necessarily cosmic issues, but they're stuff that gets in the way of, of good functioning and stuff that gets in the way of having uh, compact and, and succinct council meetings. Uh, the um, I'd include in that group of people that I'd, I'd want to talk to is uh, uh, some of the some of the town employees uh, who are impacted by the, the way the charter operates. Um, in in the um, uh, in the way the council operates, so they get a better idea of that. Uh, and then, you know, then if we have the whole, and, and which is not to say we we shouldn't. We, I don't want to lose sight of the fact that there's a public out there that we need to talk to. But those would be, you know, there'd be some things that I'd be particularly interested in. Yeah, absolutely, Dan, and then Raphael. Raphael can go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Raphael. For me, it's um Article Eight. Um, what what Erica said, I think that's where I'm at in terms of I think in terms of making the public aware, letting them sort of shape, inform, like focal elements is important to me. So that's where I'm. Thank you, um, Dan. Yeah, I I see these things as going together. Um, and also Bernie, I mean, you know, when I talk about, you know, seeing what the, what the council says, I don't, it's really out of curiosity. It's not with any agenda about what they should or shouldn't be. 
Mm -hmm. and I, but I think that both of those inside and outside of the government and a lot of the people that work in the government are also our fellow citizens. So there isn't a completely um, clear line. There isn't a clear line there. Um, so, so yeah, no, I don't see these as exclusive at all that we, that both two tracks are running along, uh, running through this. Yeah, I would agree. Um, Andy. Um, so I guess I, I'm thinking about two different sort of axes on this one. One is the work group that we talked about. What are the various ways that we're going to collect input and feedback? And then the other is what are the categories within which we're going to ask for that input and feedback? And so I, I, I think maybe we've moved on to the categories now, but so, so I, I do think the table of con, you know, the, the articles of the charter give us a starting point for what category, you know, if we're if, if we have sort of a um you know if we're looking at the legislative branch you want to get the input of the people in the legislative branch and then you want to get input from the public on how well they think that's working and what could be changed and similarly with finance and whatever so it it we we both need to think about who we want to talk to and how and then what we want to talk you know how we what, how we want to frame the the the, talk, the conversation Excellent. Um, other comment sections that folks have interest in off the cuff now? I'm hearing a lot about wanting to sort of let some of the public comments and uh, that determine where where we go in here, which I totally understand and agree with. Um, Ken. Yeah, I, I am, I'm falling in line with what Andy said of using the table of contents as this guide um this is this is our charter this is this is a this is the easiest way that we're going to we're going to create buckets is as using the work of the of the charter commission um to go by the articles to use these these uh these titles as buckets to focus people's questions and thoughts um you know whether previously we talked about i mean maybe this way i took it that you have a meeting that's just about election feedback or just about uh, the executive branch feedback or something like that um, just to focus people. So it's not just this, this no holds barred discussion all the time, which can get really, I think, frustrating and overwhelming for many people. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Erica. Yeah, I, I agree that the table of contents gives us a good framework to, to start from. My question for the group is how would we proceed because um, do we go through that uh, as a as a group, sort of section by section, um, to pull out the the pieces, the clauses, the the itemized things that we feel need attention or need to be addressed by larger groups, um, or do, or do we break that work down somehow? Um, among ourselves or on a timeline, like what's the next sort of procedural step for us? Because I think that the table of contents is a good framing device. Don't see a reason to not use it, but just thinking about how how do we use it? How do we proceed with the work? Yeah, Andy? I'm wondering if we start broad and just say, look, we're, we're, we're here to listen to to the public and we can have some initial things to say, you know, what do you like about the way that the government's working? What do you think should be improved? And then move to more, more section by section. Okay, now we're gonna talk about, you know, what we're hearing, what we're grouping that into sort of the categories and then taking that out and saying, okay, now we're gonna, tonight we're gonna, or whatever, in this next phase, we're gonna talk about the legislative branch and, and go, go deeper that way. I, I, but I, I don't know exactly the specifics of that, but it seems like yeah, people need to be able to just sort of uh, access it in whatever way they they can come to it. So so initially it might be like what 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 what's on your mind about this in general, and then we come back and say okay, now we're going to talk more specifically. Got it. Sounds good. Um, other questions, comments on this one. Let me see, just scroll through to make sure I'm getting everybody. 
I don't see anybody else. Okay, great. Um, so no more questions, comments on this one. Um, I guess that will move us. Uh, I've jotted down everybody's um, sections of interest and what folks said about public participation. And uh, that moves us to section eight, which is somewhat related, or which is the discussing the yet to be enacted sections of the charter. And I went through the charter myself and said, okay, what have we not done so far? And pretty much everything in the charter has been enacted in some way or another, with exception of the ranked choice voting and participatory budgeting. So I wanted to sort of have a discussion of, okay, we're making recommendations, but we also need to look at this in the manner of how do we assist or move the town forward in either implementing or getting rid of or revising the sections of the charter that um, we've chosen for whatever reason not to enact yet. Um, and with ranked choice voting, that's a little bit more nuanced just because it requires approval by the state legislator. But with participatory budgeting, that's just been a choice that hasn't really been enacted yet from a budgetary perspective. So I want to open that up for some discussion, um, and then we'll have future agenda planning and meeting schedule and adjourn. Meg, go ahead. Um, I'll try to be really brief. I was on the Charter Commission. I'm very involved in participatory budgeting being part of the recommendation. I spent a significant amount of time in Cambridge and learned a lot about it. And I was the chair of the committee to uh, propose to the town and uh, participatory budgeting plan. And my understanding of why it hasn't been approved is largely because of the budget, the cost of it. So I'm interested in exploring. I know a lot of uh, participatory budgeting programs around the country are funded by independent sources. I know the Robert K. Johnson, Robert Johnson Foundation in New Jersey funds pretty much all of the participatory budgeting programs there. So I'm interested in exploring that um, because um, I, I think that was the main problem people had with it. One, it. Yeah, I just have a question about that, which is, was there an amount of money that you guys suggested starting a participatory budgeting thing? No. Oh. Okay. Um, but also, one, we proposed yeah. the, the uh, community participation officer position was some, somewhat in order to staff it. Uh, oh, I see. That's another another issue is, is it, it requires yeah. some level of staffing, not a yeah. lot, but some because the proposals have to, I don't want to, again, I could, I know a lot about this and I don't want to be there. I, I appreciate it. I'm sort of picking a dog brain. with a bone on this, but um, so I won't, but if anybody wants to know more about it, let me know. But I think the staff, the, the town has to vet the proposals to make sure they're Number one, not incurring ongoing costs if they're achievable, blah blah blah. And so, in yeah. Cambridge, for example, they propose the students. They're in categories. So, what is youth students? They propose that people can order their lunch in the cafeteria with an app before they get to the cafeteria, and that just went out yeah. the window because the staff wasn't capable of managing something like that. So, there has to be a that's a vetting process. For example, right. that's one example, but I, I know yeah. a lot about it. If anybody wants to hear more, it's a, and I'm a, a fan of it, but um, it so far hasn't, the, it's. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. I, I'll send you an email about it um, because that's interesting. Um, Dan, go ahead. So we, we won't have a whole discussion about it, but so, so participatory budgeting is really grant money it's not actually taking a piece of the town's budget and taking it it's not a taking from the rest of the town it's added on from outside money is that what no, you're I'm, I'm proposing that we introduce that idea which is uh, often it's out of the town budget usually it is but where yeah. it comes from that hasn't been considered before that we that there'd be an outside funding source the other thing is the committee could theoretically review and enforce an allocation, if you will, of saying the town must allocate this specific amount of money or involve participatory budgeting at this point in the process, I guess, would be another way that it could be implemented. Dan, do you still have your hand up? Yeah, I mean, this goes back to, it seems like a thing that would really 
B, if it's there but hasn't been acted on, if there is really agreement with this in the community, this would we'd be a conduit for that to say, hey, a lot of people want to see this happen. Let's that would be a, that alone would be a way in which we would push it forward. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a great idea, Erica. Uh, just to clarify, is this are these two issues a question before this committee, like it, in general or tonight? Not tonight specifically, but they're a question before the committee because there are two sections of the charter that we're reviewing. And I brought them to our attention specifically just because they're the only sections of the charter that haven't been implemented. So there's not really a way to know how well they've actually occurred because they haven't existed this thus far. Okay. Just wanted to understand yeah. whether, like why this appears on our agenda tonight. Yeah, I guess the reason is because it is, they haven't been implemented thus far. So it felt like something that might be a higher level priority given that it hasn't happened yet. Um, Andy? Um, I think partly this came about because we had some public comment last time about, um, you know, uh, suggesting that we fast track the um, the uh, ranked choice voting, ranked choice voting, so that um, because because it hadn't been enacted yet, but um, I kind of see it as being part of the discussion. These are two categories, you know. If we're looking at at the table of contents at the various articles, these are certainly things that we would want to look at. But I I don't <clears throat> I'd want to know what you know what are the reasons that they haven't been enacted. There may be you know, logistical reasons why they haven't or financial reasons or whatever. But I, I I guess I would say that we should highlight them to make sure they make it into the discussion. But I don't know that we want to privilege them over any other categories at this point. Okay. Yeah. No, definitely. Um, also, considering like might be a place for specific outreach to reach out to Mindy Dom or one of our legislators about ranked choice voting, et cetera, and sort of ask questions about What's that. Happening? Why? Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Um, other discussions on this agenda item? I don't see any. Um, seeing none on ranked choice voting for statutory budgeting. Wow. We're finishing up early, folks. Good job. Um, okay. Uh, future agenda planning. And meeting schedule. Um, I'll just say this meeting time seems to work. I did want to discuss the hybrid meetings as opposed to just via Zoom. I'd like to have some hybrid meetings um, in addition to our in-person uh, community participation um, and outreach stuff. And then future agenda, if anybody has things they de definitively want on the agenda, I know Open Meeting Law Review will be on there for next meeting, um, as will Erica and Dan, what um, what you guys have um, from reviewing the charter and that sort of thing. Andy? And then yeah, I, I just wanted, to, the thing that I heard was that we have a couple of people who are willing to, to, to give us a, you know, a, a starting point for that discussion of how we're going to do outreach. And I think that's great. And that should be a, a major piece of our next meeting. Um, the other sort of axis of that is like, how do we dig into these, these categories? Are there particular, I, I don't know, you know, how do we want to, to figure out how we, what we want to talk about within these categories? And I don't know if that comes after we have that. I mean, I think we should have the other discussion first, what kind of outreach do we want to do? And who do we want to talk to? But then I think we need to talk about, you know, what aspects of the legislative, how do we, how do we frame a discussion of the legislative branch or the budgeting process or whatever it is? So maybe it's like a list of topics within those at some point, you know, within right. the framework. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Meg? Just a question. Have we agreed on the frequency of our meetings? Yes, every two weeks. So it's every two weeks at Thursday at six o'clock. Yes, that's correct. Yep. Thank you. So I think two weeks from now and then two weeks from then. Um, Andy, do you still have your hand up? No. Okay. Uh, 
Erica. Yeah, I think what the points that Andy raised are, are really important and are um, kind of what I was trying to allude to earlier, which is how are we going to go about this? And um, if that's a future agenda item, that's fine. But if it's if it's something we need to frame out now related to like, what are we talking about on X date for a few meetings going forward? Um, are we deciding as a group to take on sections, you know, one and two, two or two and three um, in the next meeting and come out with a sort of short list of topics and who would be best to bring those to? Um, that's, Along that's the point of my comment is like do we are we outlining a mechanism tonight? Are we kind of leaving that open for a future discussion? Um, I would, I mean, this is just me personally. I'd like to outline a mechanism tonight where we have you and Dan working on this um, and going. Well, Dan, it. just I'm sorry to interrupt you. Dan and I are going to work on the issue of how we're going to bring things to the public or how right. we're going to solicit feedback. But the, right. the, I think that the point that Andy was making was how are we deriving the content that we're right. going to discuss in the forum? Right. Like we're going to show up at a public oh, I see. forum, okay. yeah. but then I we're going to have, we're, we need to dis know what we're talking about that night or putting in the survey or whatever it is we're going to do. And that's the piece that I'm trying to break down from this giant chunk, which is the charter into smaller chunks. Are we doing it all together? one week after the other? Are we breaking it down to subgroups? I'm just trying to get a feel for what how people are thinking about that. Yeah, that's an excellent discussion question. I'm sorry, I misunderstood your question. Um, Andy? Yeah, I, I guess I'm, I'd am i go back to, um, as you're thinking, these two things start to blur into each other, I think a little bit, as you're thinking about how do we conduct outreach and get feedback, you know, maybe it's also thinking about from the general to the specific, and I don't know how specific you get in the specific, but it's like, are we going to start with, you know, general questions about, you know, forums and a survey and, you know, whatever, uh, focus groups around what's working, what's not working. And then we're going to then take that and then start to break it down into, okay, let's talk about the legislative branch or elections or whatever. Um, but I don't know, as you're, as you're thinking about what kind of outreach we, we want to have, it probably helps to be thinking a little bit about what are those conversations going to be like. So I, I don't want to keep, you know, have you guys do all the work for us and then, you know, come in next meeting and, and we, we thank you for doing all that. But I, I, I do think that, it may come up as you're thinking about like, what are what are we going to be talking about? You know, not just how are we going to talk about, it, but actually, what's the what's some of the content? Yeah, right. Meg, no, I'm just giving thumbs up. Oh yeah, no, I I agree. <laughs> I think there's also a matter of like we need to have a out we have our community forums, we have our discussions and sort of processing that data and getting it into the right place and transforming sort of say, Bob and Joe come to us and say, hey, we really want this. This has not been working because the meeting times don't work for us. How do we put that, um, that feedback into a specific bucket? Um, and actually assign it to a section of the charter where a revision or addition could be made. All right, other questions um, for the next agenda on, uh, let me just check when that date will be for folks. Um, two weeks from today, let me see. Uh, that would be we're meeting on the 24th, October 24th at 6 p.m., um, which is a Thursday. Uh, I, I'll definitely put on the agenda our open meeting law um, review and discussion and that sort of thing. Um, and I'll also put on the agenda sort of the report from Dan and Erica, and we'll have a better, we'll have a discussion about 
scheduling our public participation and that and also have a discussion of how do we want to outline the buckets of where what goes where um i think those are all good items to put on the agenda other folks with suggestions for the agenda no. okay um i guess my next question is other comments questions concerns in general items not anticipated um 48 hours before the meeting um and uh if so please bring those up now erica and then may thank you and this is maybe a point lost without athena here but um i wanted to raise a question about how we are organizing our information as a committee in the document center um uh, it was really interesting to see the uh, the comparable reports from other towns, for instance, show up in the document center. Um, but I, I, I pers this is maybe just a personal comment. I find it a little disorganizing to find all those reports loosely dropped into a folder by this meeting's date. When I, I think about, I might want to refer to something in another town's report, when I think I'm thinking about that seven weeks from now, I'm not going to remember that it came up on October 10th. Um, yeah. And if there's other ways to organize our information, I think now would be a good time to to lay that I, out. I don't know if that's possible or if Athena is the person to do it, but I just want I, to I think out. Athena is the person to do it, and I will send her an email if you want to as well. Go right ahead about asking if we could organize it into folders by topic. Yeah. having like a general information folder of uh, this section of the charter, that section of the charter will make it much easier for us to go back um, and actually look in here. I, I completely agree. So I'll email her and ask about that. Um, and if you want to as well, that would be great. Yep. Andy and then Meg, or I said Meg and then Andy, sorry. So looking at the schedule of the meetings, which I just am looking at, we're meeting on the 24th and then again on the October 31st, that's only one week. The second question. No, that can't be right. Well, that's what it says here. I was reading what it says on this list. They're all virtual. So whether they are hybrid, that's something we'll decide. Yeah. Well, I'd like to have some hybrid meetings. Do we want to agree on a amount of hybrid meetings? Do we want to do three? I don't know, let me just first point out that on the schedule that was circulated, it says October 24th and then October 31st. And then... It's, yeah, I'm not sure why we would be meeting on October 31st. There's an Halloween as well. Well, it's just a week after the pre. I'm just the schedule. Well, I'm just pointing it out. It's on one week. Yeah. Um, Andy, and then Erica. I mean, I think we originally had a, a a schedule every two weeks, starting on the third, and then that that got moved to the first. The next meeting got moved to the tenth. So I think everything moved every two weeks after that. But um, I also I also just wanted to respond to the, the previous question, which I, I believe Athena was talking about creating some logical folders for, you know, resources. So I, I do think that we're probably going to have, you know, meeting by meeting folders just so that, you know, there's an agenda and there's minutes and things like that. But when you know, and then there were a bunch of things that were submitted for this meeting, but I, I think if they're resources, they would, you know, that, that are research, they would go into a re research folder right. or something like that. Yep. But I think Athena had some sort of sense about about some of that, and we'll need to probe, probe that with her. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll set up a time that I can meet with Athena and ask her a question about the schedule. Um, Dan, and then I'll go back to you, Erica, if that's okay. Great. Yeah, I mean, just in support of Erica's point and, and, and this, it's not just for us, it's for the public as well. This is the library we've been we've been drawing on um, and to have that be uh, organized uh, by by subject. And if things are in two different folders, there's no harm to that. If there's a question of clarif of uh, classification. Yeah. And I'll just add for anyone watching, go online dot Amherst gov document center charter review committee anyone can look at what we're looking at. What we're looking at isn't secret information by any means. Um, Erica. Yeah, I wanted to go back to the, the calendar question. Um, there was a an annotation next to that 
uh, meeting calendar that had to do with the meeting time of a of the of a different committee, and that's why. If I can share my screen, I can yeah what, what, I, what I'm talking ahead. about. Sure. Um, can everyone see that? Um, so there's an annotation here that has to do with the government legislative committee. Uh, that I'm assuming this is Athena commenting that if we were to alternate these dates, she's trying to work out with who can who can use the room, given your comment about the hybrid meeting possibility. I think that's what that's about. That's how I interpret that. Okay. Yeah. Do we want to actually go in here and look like what do we want to be? Um, when do we want our hybrid meetings to happen throughout the year? And sort of highlight that. I guess I could propose we want to have a hybrid meeting on November 14th, a hybrid meeting on the 27th, a hybrid meeting on the 17th, and then a hybrid meeting um, on the 3rd. I guess that way we're sort of mixing in some hybrid meetings where folks can come in person in the town room. Andy, go ahead. You're muted, I think. Andy. Sorry, I guess we need to think about what, why uh, Athena was scheduling uh, meetings two week, you know, two weeks in a row, and whether there'll be enough time for any interim work between that, you know, I mean, we're okay. Our next meeting is two weeks from now, right? So then, that I guess gives enough time for Erica and Dan and whoever to to do to do their, um, you know, sort of brainstorming and bring something to the table. But if there's some work that would need to be done between the, that meeting and the next one, it's only a week, and we may want to decide whether that's realistic or not. Yeah. Um, hmm. I don't know. I'm sorry. I, I don't know if she um, yeah. is scheduling around that committee because the room's not available or because she's not available. Because yeah, I'm not sure there. either. Um, these are these are questions we should ask her at our next meeting, um, really, as much as I would also like answers on October 21st, if Athena is able to make that meeting. I think that's when we should ask those questions. Um, Maybe just make an agenda item for next time. Yeah, exactly. I will. Yeah. Um, which would be hybrid meetings and meeting dates and questions for Athena. Excellent. Okay. Um, Bernie? Um, yeah, I was just puzzling over um, when we do the, when we do the, the hybrid meetings, um, is that going to be a particular time that we would invite in someone to do a presentation or invite in a group to, to, to offer some suggestions? And if we're going to do that, it might be more helpful to, to get our, you know, to get ourselves going first before we start to, to plot those out. Yeah, I think that's um, a good idea. I, you know, and I, it's sort of, sort of an interesting thing to be meeting on Halloween. I mean, yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> sure how I feel about that as a college student. <laughs> <laughs> no, a little trick or treat, but yeah, know. yeah, um, yeah, I'm not the and for like actual public participation means who's going to show up on Halloween. Um, Andy? <laughs> you might not like what... <laughs> oh. hey, maybe we don't... I mean, I think we want to think about these meetings as, you know, maybe scheduling a bare bones of, of meetings where we're going to deliberate. We're going to think about what we've learned so far. And then when we're doing outreach and scheduling forums or, or you know, uh, focus groups or whatever that that might be off the you know the schedule because I, I don't know that we can schedule too far in advance if we don't know where we're going to be or who what? we're meeting yeah with so mm -hmm. it might be that we just meet I mean I guess we need to sort of review that meeting schedule because I just put in every other week because that's what we said last time and now thank you Meg for pointing out that we yeah, have that two meetings two weeks in a row and mm -hmm. we, you know 
we might want to figure out what's the minimum number we need to keep our deliberation going as we go along and then add in things as we're doing more, you know, outreach. Yeah. No, I um I agree because I had assumed it was every other week as well. So I um made tentative plans, I guess you could say, with folks <laughs> for Halloween. So it's mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I would agree. <laughs> Meg, go ahead. <laughs> you, did you have a question? No. Oh, I'm laughing. Okay, excellent. I'll, I'll um, so you don't hit me laugh. I'll mute. <laughs> no, that's fine. Go right ahead. Um, alrighty. So on that note, uh, I'll definitely have that as another agenda item. I'm going to make a motion to adjourn if I don't see any other questions, comments. I, I have a question about the minutes. Do I call? I don't need to take everybody's time. Do I call you about it? Uh, yeah, please. You can you can email me, call me, text me. I think you have my number, right? Yep. I'll just, yep. it's not That's a business. It's, it's just a detail of what. Yep. Please, okay. no problem. The timing. Thank you. No problem. Alrighty, other questions, comments before we say good night to everybody? All right, I move to adjourn. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Excellent. Have a nice night, everybody. Bye-bye. Good night.